the Mon Game, a video game genre defined by the collecting, raising, and fighting of monsters. Mon Game is a name that many people like because it's less condescending than just saying Pokemon clone. And while that's not a social issue I'd put my own time into, I can respect it. However, while many of these games were influenced by Pokemon, the next most important influence was Tamagotchi. It wasn't always just about collecting monsters, it was about raising them too. And for me, killing them too. And Tamagotchi's LCD device itself was a huge influencer in the space. There were tons of oddly shaped, quirky, and gimmicky devices, and then I segue to scanners. Scanners was a line of virtual pet adjacent toys released from 2000 to 2002. The original release of the toy split up over 126 monsters to collect over three devices, a blue, red, and green version, which is not familiar at all. Remember, Mon Game not Pokemon clone. Within the series lore, each color represents a different monster tribe. Zendra for blue, Patak for green, and Huala for red. Now, how you collect the monsters is how scanners stood out. At the top of the device is a UPC barcode scanner, and you collect monsters by scanning codes and discovering them inside. By scanning and collecting monsters and items, you can eventually hook up the device to one another and battle it out. The UPC scanner on the device really made it stick out amongst the competition, and the way it sticks out on the device kind of makes it look like a vape. What the f I remember thinking scanners looked really cool, but as a five-year-old, I had all of the other franchises and toys being shoved down my throat, so I never really took a look at it. But now I'm an adult, and I have my very own money to spend on stupid shit. So let's take a look back on scanners, because maybe revisiting a missed opportunity from my childhood will give me that same sweet release of dopamine that getting likes and comments on this video does. But first, I've been doing a lot of videos that require me to purchase a lot. From things like robotic pets, video nows, to scanners, if it wasn't for sponsors like Skillshare, I wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff. And I am ecstatic to be working with Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of topics, including things like business and creative skills. And with Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access to their library for just $10 a month. Now, if you didn't know this, I'm on YouTube, and people ask me quite often for advice on how to start a YouTube channel, but I'm always getting asked the wrong questions. People always want to find out what camera they need, what editing software they need, what microphone they need, and that is just wrong, wrong, wrong. Skillshare has a great DIY class about creating professional looking video with equipment you probably already own. However, as a YouTuber, that's just one step of the equation because you are your own boss, meaning the only person who's responsible for you is you, meaning I spend way too much time trying to brew craft coffee instead of working. But fortunately, Skillshare has a class that I too will be checking out. It's their Productivity for Creatives class, which is an amazing skill set to learn, especially if you are self-employed like me. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they're giving me the hookup to hook up you guys. So you can click the link in the description down below to get two months free of Skillshare Premium. So get started and learn something. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Scanners was developed and produced by Radica, a division of Mattel who's known for making electronic toys like Cube World, UV Funkies, and Play TV. The scanners devices themselves aren't the first to make a game out of scanning barcodes, and it certainly wasn't the last. In 1991, Japanese toy company Epoch came out with the Barcode Battler, which allowed players to scan and collect barcode monsters with official cards and other UPC codes. These could then be connected to certain Famicom and Super Famicom games. The device flopped outside of Japan. But of course, Nintendo would go on to make a very similar product of their own, the e-reader, in 2001. And the device flopped outside of Japan. In 1994, Tiger Electronics made barcodes, which let you scan cards to interact with LCD games. And of course, circling back to V-Pets, Digimon Frontier's D-Tector toy could scan barcodes, which were represented in the show as Digicode. There are others too, but I'm really sleepy. I don't wanna really do it, get into it right now, maybe later. So while Scanners was definitely not the first of its kind, I would certainly argue that it was the most ambitious of its kind. The scanning toys, creating a whole series of monsters and lore to go along with it. It's neat shit. All right, hear me out. 
On the planet of chaos, three tribes of aliens are fighting. Suddenly, no more planet. So they all come to Earth to continue their war, but they hide inside UPC codes so they can be incognito. However, some f***ing dweeb named Andrew Flux Kidwell, who looks like Andrew from Buffy, makes a scanner's controller so he can turn their intergalactic war into a marketable toy line. And oh boy, are these marketable. Forget Pikachu, Scanners has fan favorites like Snoizel, Sticks, and let's not forget the adorable Salamandro. More like Salamangelo, am I right? The actual controller itself is pretty complex as far as these kinds of toys go. Instead of Tamagotchi's three mystery buttons, there's a D-pad for selecting stuff in the menu, A to select, B to go back, a reset button, and a pan button to allow you to view a monster's entire image. The top of the device has a port to connect it to other players' devices, and of course, the worst, UPC scanner of all time. When you're at the self-checkout at Target, it's like bada bing, bada boom, and Am I really that ugly? But the UPC scanner on the controller is super slow. You have to place it directly on a UPC code and then run it slowly back and forth until you get a successful scan. An unsuccessful scan will be represented as a flat line. A successful scan with an empty UPC code will have a light beat, but a successful scan with either an item or a monster will just jump right up. So let's go find some monsters. Now I'm not a vlogger. I'm not comfortable in person, and I'm certainly not comfortable talking to a camera in public. So I'm gonna go to the one place in Orlando that I know of that really won't care while we do our stupid vlog scanners shit. It's fucking hot. If it's not on a perfectly flat surface, you're not getting a successful scan. If there's more than a thin layer of plastic, you're not getting a successful scan. And if it's a little too crowded, I'm not getting a successful scan. All right, it's getting a little crowded in here. Should we go somewhere else? The next thing I notice is it's not an immediately rewarding toy. You are not going to get an item or a monster on every scan whatsoever. It's tedious and it's most of what you're doing. Heartbeat. Oh, did we get anything from silver? Oh my God. Why, why aren't I getting any monsters? There I, are no monsters anymore, they all died. I think so. Why don't we scan the monsters and stuff? <gasps> That's the smartest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> As a kid, what I thought was cool about the toy's concept was being able to bring it with me while a parent was running errands. But after searching for about an hour at Disney, I only found one item. Just imagine, imagine this. You go to the grocery store with mom. You're so excited because you got your scanners and you're gonna scan some SpaghettiOs because you wanna get your new monster. And nothing. That's scanners. Guess it's time to switch locations. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. You know where we're going? Over there. Do you know why? You know what they got there? Barcodes. Dude, UPC stands for universal. We're in the right place. <laughs> now that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Once again, after nearly 45 minutes of looking through UPC codes, I only found one monster, and I'm scanning successfully. I feel like you need to balance out the scanning convenience level with common items in monsters. If they ever were to do a reissue of scanners or a similar product now, I would definitely want an improved scanner with the same level of rarity, or the same bad scanner with a higher encounter rate. How, how did kids do this? How did they have the patience to like, scan like every little thing ever till they find one thing. Yesterday we found an item. A lot of people online have compared scanners to Pokemon Go. And while I totally agree with that comparison, Pokemon Go has a different feeling. In Pokemon Go, you have different Pokemon with different rarity levels, and while Scanners does too, you are not guaranteed to find something with Scanners at all. Where in Pokemon, you're usually guaranteed, but most of the time, you can really only find the common creatures. You'll always be able to accomplish something though. All right, it's a little too crowded over here, I'm anxious. Instead, Scanners is a test of patience, and the worst is when you scan something just to find out it's incompatible with your particular color. However, about a year after the release of the original version of Scanners, we got the Scanner Commander, which had all 126 monsters plus 12 new ones. 
While it wasn't compatible with the original controllers, it did offer a better experience because you were more likely to find something. Honestly, I was kind of upset to learn that it wasn't the quick scan and go, Pokemon Go-like experience I was hoping for. <gasps> what it I think it's an item. I just think it's an item. You moving? <gasps> <gasps> we got a monster! We got one! We got one! The socks! It's in the socks! <laughs> Alright, let's keep scanning. Let's keep scanning. Uh, we got one. Ew. What? Uh. If you were to get into scanners cause you're trash like me, my recommendation is to go to a bookshelf and just scan every item in order. If you want that out and about experience, however, sit your butt down at a Barnes and Noble and just go book, by book. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to date this video. If you're watching this video in a few years, Barnes & Noble was a chain of bookstores. I quite liked it. So in order to battle, you need to collect three monsters. Then you connect the device and going back and forth between the two, you do a turn-based battle like Pokemon. Unfortunately, I could only find two monsters for my red controller. I scanned everything in my apartment, everything. If you just think I wasn't trying enough, between all of my games, books, DVDs, VHS tapes, toys, and pantry items, it must have been over 500 scans. Just sitting there for hours, scanning. It was horrendous and I couldn't even get three monsters. However, if you are into the scanning, Scanners had a few other spin-offs as well. There was Scanners TV, a plug and play battle simulator, Scanners Orbs, which was just a monster battler with no scanning device. There was a Dragon Ball GT tie-in and Barbie Scanimals, which was the same concept, except you collected pets instead of monsters. The last Scanners releases were Scanners Racers, which let you collect and race cars. Okay, I really like the concept behind scanners. I used to love doing things like geocaching and I still love playing Pokemon Go occasionally. The idea to turn the world into your playing field for a video game is something really exciting, but I think what holds scanners back isn't just its weird monster designs, but the persistence and extreme patience required to do anything with the device. And while finding a monster is incredibly exciting, that's only because it took 100 scans before you got it. I couldn't find any monsters. I said monsters with an S, I can find one. You should start out with the monster and have battling available right from the get-go. There are codes in the manual for practice scanning. Why doesn't that give you a beginner's monster to at least get accustomed with the gameplay? The scanning should be an exciting way to get better at the game and to continue to interact with it. You shouldn't have to work for 10 hours before you can actually begin to have fun with it. Where? I'm gonna be making a lot of videos about you in the upcoming weeks. Scanners is a really cool concept. And while I think mobile games offering a similar experience certainly do it better, there is a charm to the device and there is a kind of quirky charm to going through all of the UPC codes. And when you do finally find a monster, it's really rewarding. It's just not worth the dozens of hours worth of work leading up to it. So while it's not my favorite Mon game experience, Scanner certainly gave me a fun time that many other Pokemon clones don't. Wait, no. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. Did you have scanners as a kid? If not, what other weird virtual pet devices did you have or want to have? Other than that, if this is your first video of mine, subscribe, check out my other videos, follow me on social media, all of the stuff that you know that YouTubers already ask you. Anyways, have a good day and I will see you next week.